Hey guys, so classmate asked, can you explain more about false positives and false negatives? What are they and how can we calculate them? So in my last video, I explained how statistics could be applied to the real world. Give an example of how ELISA tests are used to test whether patients have contracted HIV and could give results that are false positive or false negative. Now, this explanation may not be as intuitive when it comes to understanding the differences between false positives and false negatives, and their counterparts true positives and true negatives. So let's see some other examples of where these terms could apply. Let's say we give four pictures of animals to a baby, and we ask them to tell us whether or not the picture has a dog in it. For our first picture, we have a picture of a dog, and the child states that this is a dog. This is a true positive, since the picture has a dog and the child correctly stated that there was a dog. For our second picture, we have a picture of a cat, and the child states that this is not a dog. This is a true negative, because the picture did not have a dog and the child correctly stated that there was not a dog. In our third picture, we have a bird, but the child states that this is a dog. This is a false positive. Positive because the child had stated there was a dog, but false because there wasn't. In our fourth picture, we show a dog, but the child states that this is not a dog. This is a false negative. Negative because the child had stated there was not a dog, but false because there was. We can relate this back to the ELISA tests. A true positive test would tell us if the person has HIV, and it is confirmed that they do. A true negative test would tell us if the person does not have HIV, and it is confirmed that they do not. A false positive test will tell us if the person does have HIV, but after getting a second opinion, it is revealed that they do not. A false negative test will tell us if the person does not have HIV, but then a second opinion tells us that they do. All of these tests can be calculated in terms of the accuracy by seeing how many times we are correctly identifying the conditions that we are looking for. In short, we must add the total amount of true positives and true negatives over the total amount of tests we had done. Essentially, eliminating all the false positives and false negatives we had found. So, in the example of the child, if the child had correctly said there was a dog in the pictures 10 times, and had correctly said there wasn't a dog 15 times out of the total 30 pictures they classified, then this child would have an accuracy rate of identifying these images of 83%. ELISA tests, on the other hand, tend to be even more accurate, especially in conjunction with the Western Blot test, with Stanford Healthcare citing a 99.9% .9 accuracy. But let's say we want to see how many times we had received a false negative or false positive from these tests. We can calculate this as either the false negative rate or false positive rate. To find the former, we divide the total number of false negatives by the amount of things that were actually positive, which includes our false negatives and true positives. To find the false positive rate, we divide the total number of false positives by the amount of things that were actually negative which includes our false positives and true negatives. Looking at the baby example again, let's say we got three false negatives, which means that three times there was a dog in the picture, but the child had said there wasn't. And we have two false positives, so two times there was not a dog in the picture, but the baby said there was. Therefore, our actual positives is 3 plus 10, which is 13. In that 13 of the pictures given to the child, there was a dog. And our actual negatives is 2 plus 15, or 17. In that, of the 30 images given to the child, 17 did not have dogs in them. Calculating each rate, we see that our false negative rate is around 23%, and our false positive rate is around 12%. I hope this video helped you to understand more about false positives and false negatives, and how we can calculate different tests' accuracy and error rates.